Okay. All right, Martha. Thank you. Hey, Unity of Frederick Bird. Great to see you guys. For those of you that just watched the video that went bad, we're starting over because we have a new video service and here we are. We're, we're testing it out. Yep. So, welcome to uh, Consciousness Rising, Navigating Turbulent Times. We've had wave after wave of things that have happened to us in 2020. Impeachment, COVID-19, Black Lives Matter. We're not done. We're, the chaos is there and we're, we need to learn to ride the waves so that we can bring love into the world as we are uh, created to do. And so uh, this talk is both a uh, talk about where we are in the world and where I believe that we're going. Uh, some of it is based on my new book, Consciousness Rising, that will be out. Uh, thank you. The, uh, the print run will be done on July 6th, and so soon after that, it will be available to everywhere and to everyone. So uh, you all have, have been a wonderful support in uh, my development of this book, and it feels like it's uh, going to be fun to give birth to it fully. So uh, the pictures that I've got for you today are from a website uh, called unsplash.com and they're incredible photos that creators just post them for anybody to use. Uh, it's part of what I consider to be an abundance practice where it's about just giving to the world. These photographers have given beautiful pictures. So. Uh, this is what our world looks like and feels like right now. Turbulent waters. All kinds of things are changing. All kinds of uh, uh, voices are being heard that weren't being heard before. Uh, there's all kinds of things happening around us. And sometimes it's really hard to keep our heads above the water. Sometimes that what I feel like navigating these times. What we all want is this, right? Just chilling out, life is good, sunny skies. I'm afraid to tell you that this probably won't happen for a little while. We're probably going to keep getting waves of, of change as our consciousness rises. We're, we've got to figure out a way to stand in our power as uh, all of these events are happening. And we're starting to do that with figuring out how to uh, go back live in, in our uh, sanctuary with services. Uh, we're, we're learning as we go. Today's Unity Principle is from Charles Fillmore. And I was told that the type is probably too small for uh, people that are watching on Facebook, so I'm going to read it to you. It is the law of spirit that we must be that which we would draw to us. If we would draw to us love, we must be love, be loving and kind. If we would have peace and harmony in our environment, we must establish it within ourselves. So, I want to talk a little bit about ballast today, because uh, ballast is something that you put in a vessel that uh, helps you to navigate, whether it's uh, ballast from, uh, for a ship, or ballast for an airplane, or ballast for a hot air balloon. It's uh, something that helps to weigh things down. What we know about ballast when it's in a ship 
is that when we get into choppy waters in a ship and we have a lot of ballast, we have to start discharging our ballast. We have to start throwing it overboard. In fact, some of the, uh, you know, ex exploration of uh, underwater, they find all kinds of things that ships have thrown overboard to keep from going under. So for us, our job as humans, we have this vessel. And in turbulent waters, we have to unload some of our ballast. We have to start throwing stuff off that we've been carrying so that we can be lighter and not go under in the turbulent waters. But ballast is also used in aeronautics, both with uh, hot air balloons, where you load ballast on and then you start floating up and if you want to go higher, you throw some of that ballast off, whether it's water or sand or usually used for hot air balloons. And for airplanes, uh, it's, it helps airplanes to uh, have the right attitude, as it's called in aeronautics, where, where you put the heavy weights in an airplane uh, gives it the balance it needs to, to fly, to, to lift off, and to land. So uh, we, all, we have to pay attention to our attitude as uh, humans to make sure that we're, we're ready to take off into this new consciousness and we're ready to land in the world in a very solid form. One of my favorite definitions is this one. Anything that gives mental, moral, or political stability or steadiness, the ballast of a steady income. Most of us have lost some of that steadiness in the last three months. It feels uncertain whether you've been laid off or uh, there you can't see your loved ones or uh, all kinds of things have changed. And so that steadiness has, has been uh, thrown overboard for many of us. And the last one, uh, gravel, broken stone, slag, etc., placed between and under the tiles of a railroad to give stability, provide drainage, and distribute loads. So ballast is really important in the seen world. But I would assert that ballast is what slows us down in the spiritual world. The ballast that we need to uh, look at is what is it that we're carrying? What kind of ballast do we have in our life that we are ready or in need of jettisoning, jettisoning so that we can lift our consciousness higher and higher. So <laughs> I've given a couple of examples here. Uh, as we go through this talk, I'd like for you to kind of think about what personally, what ballast are you carrying that might be good to throw overboard in this time so that you can either uh, not go under the turbulent waters or you can rise above as in a hot air balloon, which will be my second analogy. So judgment of others, resentment or self-pity. Resentment is that kind of feeling of being left out or that you don't have enough and other people do. Um, I've, I've personally struggled with that for most of my life, um, that sense of uh, other people are getting things that I don't get or whether, you know, maybe it probably came from my childhood because I have two older brothers and they got a lot of, they got to do a lot of stuff that, you know, oh, you're too young, Tom. So. Um, you know, that sense of being left behind. Uh, in unity, that is an erroneous thought. There is no left behind. There is only abundance. There is no lack. 
judgment of self. Oftentimes, we carry the ballast of judging ourselves about our skills, our talents, the way we interact with people, the uh, potential we have. We, we often judge ourselves, and that holds us down. That holds us back from being everything that we can be. And limitations we've adopted in our belief system, whether it's personal limitations or a limitation that, uh, well, it's just human nature that we're violent with each other, or there will never be peace in the world. Those are belief system limitations that it's time to jettison. Because if you're looking at what's happening today, and you think that's the end of the world, then it will be for you. It will bring you down. And so it's time to start jettisoning, jettisoning the ideas, the beliefs, that maybe we've held all our life about the potential and the possibility of human existence on this planet. Because it's changing incredibly right now. And there's wonderful things going on. As much as, uh, I don't know how much you watch the news, but as much as the negative stuff is out there, there's a bigger world of positive stuff going on. And it's just a matter of turning away from what I call in my book, the trough of fear that we're being fed, turning to choosing love. So as we go through this, think about the ballast that you're carrying right now. And maybe you've thrown some off already, but there's more work to do to throw off that ballast. And now I'm going to turn to uh, the other metaphor to use today, and that is uh, hot air balloon. So as we rise in our consciousness, we fill up with spirit. And as we fill up with spirit, it lifts us. It lifts us off the world, off of the, the ground. And then as we throw off that ballast, we can raise higher and higher in our being as we're existing in the world. So where we can have a beautiful view a beautiful view of what's happening in the world and what where we are. What that can do as we do our spirituality practice, as we get quiet and listen to spirit and clear out the distorted thinking, then we get a different perspective on the world. And this is a daily practice that I invite you into. Whatever your daily practices are that connect you with Source, I'd invite you to redouble your efforts to make that happen because each day you practice, you'll gain a little altitude. And what that altitude does for us is it gives us a different perspective. Maybe one of those houses, see if I can figure out the pointer here, well, you can pick out a house. Maybe one of those houses is your house. And so looking down on your house in a neighborhood gives you a different perspective of how you fit in to your community, of where you belong, of how you can help, of what you can do. Maybe Being in that higher altitude gives you a sense of the lay of the land. You get a better perspective on, you know, where the rough spots are, where the smooth spots are, where you can find safety, where is going to be a challenge, just like we are doing with COVID-19. You know, all of you have done a risk assessment of whether it's safe to come in here, right? You get to choose what 
challenge you want to make, whether you want to stay in the fields and the lowlands or whether you want to climb up to uh, a better perspective on the, on the mountainside. Being in that higher consciousness gives you the ability to understand that there's millions and billions of other perspectives. There's millions of people in our, in our immediate area. There's billions of people on the planet. Every one of them has as much right to their perspective as you have to yours. So it builds that sense of, I'm, I'm just one of a huge collection of people that are doing their best to make it through this world. And as we all raise our consciousness incrementally, then things expand exponentially in a, in a better way. But it's not just humans. We also, when we're in a hot air balloon, when we've raised our consciousness, we can also see that even as humans, we're part of something bigger. We're part of the natural world all around us. And it sustains us and supports us. And what we do has an impact on the rest of the planet, on how it can continue to sustain us or it can drag us down and uh, we can, we can uh, soil our own mess. A different perspective, a higher consciousness can help us see the road ahead, whether it's straight or twisty turning. You can get a better perspective on where you're going and what path to follow. And so raising your consciousness gives you uh, farther insight into what you would like to do to bring more love into the world. What is your path forward? And it helps us to recognize that there's not just one path. There's lots of paths. And we have lots of choices. We have choices in every moment. And those choices can take us one way or another. One choice isn't necessarily better than the other. But we are, uh, one of our greatest freedoms is that freedom of choice. And so this this photo I'm almost sure was photoshopped, so, um, but it makes the point that I want to make. So, choices. We, we often come to a choice point and there's two paths. There's a path to go down into the dark part or a path to go up into the light, and up, up higher. Sometimes to, to lose our ballast, to throw our ballast overboard, we've got to go down that dark path. We've got to turn within and see uh, whether that's an essential part of us or whether that's something that we can let go of and throw off. But each of us has choices in every moment to continue our ways that we've developed through the ballast we've taken on in our life, or we can unload that ballast and rise to the occasion. So I've got a excerpt of my book that I'd like to read. I'm going to move over to the other side, the other um, Well, no, I'll just stay here because you, you on, on the Facebook can't read it anyway. <laughs> so, make, making the choice for love is not a response to our environment. 
Choosing love is an act of creation, joining together with the creative force of the universe to flow love into the world. Flowing love is a practice that grows into an art. Practicing love first requires that we separate ourselves from the everyday world in order to learn the vibration of the love that brought us into being. In this act, we do not respond to the world around us. We shut down the constant sensory input that keeps our mind distracted from the channel of love that reaches everywhere and comes from everywhere. The work is to keep ourselves tuned to the frequency of love that created the universe, pure consciousness. As we grow in our ability to hold that frequency, tuning out the noise of the world becomes easier and easier. As our individual practice deepens, we develop the capacity to hold the frequency of love in the world for longer periods of time and in more challenging settings. The ultimate goal is to extinguish our human response to the events of the world and to make universal our ability to hold the vibration of love that created the universe in every situation we encounter. So that's a, a brief excerpt from my book. If you want uh, a longer version of that, you're welcome to go to my website. I've got a longer excerpt on that chapter. So, whoops. the lotus flower is a symbol of transformation in the sense that there's a lot of muck down underneath there, and it finds a way to come to the surface and bloom and show its beauty, which is what we try to be are attempting to do as humans and we are moving toward. All of the pictures of lotus flowers that I've seen or found uh, look like they're on a day that, you know, we can just lay back in the water and relax. They're clear, smooth, calm. But this lotus flower also is blooming when it's pouring down rain when the waters are turbulent. It doesn't stop blooming just because it's a nice day. It just keeps blooming. That's our job as humans, to just keep blooming, to let go of the ballast that we've brought, that we've taken on in our lives and rise to that higher consciousness where we can Co-create love, no matter what the world looks like at the time. And so let's take this idea into our meditation. Our way shower Jesus told us how to pray, but praying is simply a form of meditation. He said, don't stand out there like the Pharisees and make a big show of your prayer. Go into a room and close the door behind you. Now, metaphorically, what Jesus was saying was, don't make a big deal of your prayer out into the world, but go into your heart. Go into that place inside of you where no one else can go but you. And in that place, commune with your Creator, because in that place you'll find love and then be able to bring it out into the world. So let's go into meditation. I invite you to get comfortable in your chair, put maybe 